A lot has been uh, a lot of national conversation uh, debate over transphobia, homophobic statements and feelings and sentiments being expressed. Ari Lennox, we talked about her in the morning culture, yeah. Yeah. how she felt about it. And she told her listeners and followers exactly how she felt. Uh, mm -hmm. Our next guest came under fire for uh, him expressing his way. So we, we thought we might get a little clarity on it. Uh, so we welcome to the morning culture, Mr. Malik Yoba. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh reaching out. Amen, talking. amen. Kind of all got started. You put up a post of that uh, horrific situation where the guy committed suicide after that video went viral of people teasing him about being trans attractive. And you said this was uh, another heartbreaking example of homophobia, transphobia, hatred, and hypocrisy. We as black folks, black men in particular, have to name, face, and call out and do work on the heel. Uh, a lot more attention seems to have been paid to your statement that you were trans attractive. You know what? Back again to being good human. Thank you. Because the whole purpose of the post was the fact that I will be at the Trans Visibility March on Washington on September 27th and 28th, where I am doing a workshop uh, called Love and Trauma, the Trans Experience. And so you guys know me for a long time. You know, my roots in the community, my roots with young people. Um, I've been doing that work since I was 16. So uh, that's global mission work that I've done my whole life um, that I take very seriously. And I've always known trans people. I've, you know, grown up with kids in New York that became homeless and, you know, drug addicted, gay or trans kids because parents have no love for that or no understanding of it, um, kick them out the house. And so this has been an issue for me that I've been passionate about for a really long time. Um, I just haven't been public about it like i'm not public about every aspect of my life but mm -hmm. you know those uh, who are my friends who some are now famous folks as well you get to watch them on shows like pose or transparent or the new hustle movie a hustler movie so um i think the, the world has finally moved to a place where i felt that when i see young black men I think it's okay to bully anybody about anything it's, I, I take exception to that because when young people are doing it and they go unchecked by us older folks, then that is why we have the, the world we live in now where people will stand around and watch someone get their ass beat and they'll videotape it as mm. opposed to helping. And that's the culture we live in. We live in a clickbait culture, a culture that wants people, it wants to sensationalize people's pain and people's suffering. And you got other folks who want to take advantage of that. So you have someone like myself, who's loved and respected globally and in all communities, but particularly the black community where I'm from, um, who's been doing this work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, folks will take that moment to, to say, you know, let's throw some dirt on this, this man's name. There are people who are being killed and hurt that sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. I'm not cool with that. There are men, black men, Latino men, white men. They're athletes and rappers and, and politicians that love trans women, that sleep with trans women and do it on the low. And because of the shame and the fear and, and all of those things. And so, you know, it's a radical time we're living in. But I love y'all for taking the time and having the thoughtfulness to say, yo, we know Malik. You guys know me for 25 years. Mm -hmm. You know there's no dirt on my name. You know my vibration. You know frequency that I vibrate at. Ultimately, the love is going to win. Talking to Malik Yoba about um, his post supporting transgender rights and situations. Were you amazed at the backlash? I didn't expect it to solely be focused on trans attraction. And what does that even mean? I knew it was important to, to shake the tree, as it were, and, and make some noise. Um, I did not anticipate the fall on my children, quite frankly, or my family, my siblings. But... It happens. I take responsibility for that faux pas. But, like, what is that about? That's not about humanity. What's up, Malik? This is JR here. You said that people can say whatever they like, and you're also learning what it means to be trans attracted. What will you say to folks who would now question your identity or even label you as just being gay? I don't live for other people's label. People say what they want all day long. Short answer is I'm not gay. I'm not attracted to men. That's first and foremost. And for the record, trans women do not date gay men 99% of the time. I say I'm heterosexual. I love women. And 
I love women. We're talking to Malik Yoba about um, his truth, his side, his authentic side of the story, what he's involved with in regards to the trans community uh, and the march coming up September 27th and 28th in Washington, D.C., uh, the transgendered march on Washington. Um, you mentioned in that last block that you said someone was creating a rumor or an allegation about you. Uh, was posted on Facebook that basically said um, you paid for transgendered prostitution and not only that but while this individual was a teenager at 13 and 16. Yeah that's that's unfortunate you know I, even though here's the thing the game right so talking to my PR folks and they said don't use the word unfortunate because it sounds like you're defending. But I have love for that person. I don't know that person, but I have love for that person because here's an anecdote. As an actor, I don't do roles where I harm women or children as a rule because the real work of an actor is to be, right? So you have to find a dark place to hurt people, mm. right? And so I don't do that because that's not... Uh, uh, an emotional place, a psychic place, an energetic place that I want to play from. And so I choose not to play those type of roles on purpose. Um, and that anecdote for me just sort of hopefully can shine a little light on like my level of humanity, even through my work as an artist. And so, and even to be able to say I have love for this person because, you know, hey, that's a bold move. To, to, to put a lie like that out there, to, to say, and that's serious, to say that me who has a lifetime of service to humanity is engaged in that kind of illicit behavior. You don't have black men in the world talking like this. Who? Where? Me. And so I said it is time for me to stand in a different space. The president says you don't matter. Hmm. Why is that okay? That is not okay. Because transgender people, in my experience with them, both trans men and trans women, have a very special perspective that the world could benefit from. And a lot of times we're dealing with transgender people who don't even know it. I cannot tell you how many people have split up into my DMs are from around the world. Around the world. People who have dated trans people have been disowned by their families. Mm. People who have been killed. That's what this is about. So... September 27th, I'm actually doing the workshop with Carmen Carrera for Love and Trauma, the Trans Experience. And the 28th, I'll be running my mouth from a podium, standing with my folks. And I'm going to continue to do the work that I've been doing my entire life to leave the world a better place than I found it. Malik Yoba, everybody. Malik, we appreciate you taking the time out to not only live your truth, but to share your truth here with us this morning. You know, we like to find out from the person. I'm tired of reading stuff. I appreciate that. And you know what, bro? Even though we've done this, there's still people who are going to misunderstand. My, one of my favorite documentaries is The Black Godfather with Clarence Avon. He says, I don't have problems. I have friends. I appreciate y'all.